My name is Jan Welch, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Then and Now Blading interview series. For this episode, I'll be interviewing Brian Freeman, also known as B Free. Like myself, Brian started skating in Austin with Texas legends like Jason Howard, Mason Richard, and Zach Gutweiler. In this interview, we go back to when we first met, discuss Brian's early days in Austin, his influences, and his new sponsor, Icon. We also talk about his Be Free Blading Academy, Skate IA, how to make money in skating today, and the current state of the industry. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload new videos. And leave any comments, suggestions, or questions in the comments area. The interview series is also available as a podcast. Search Then and Now Blading on all podcast streaming services to subscribe to the podcast version. Make sure to follow me on social media. I have links to my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter below. Visit thenandnowblading.com for information on all the different shows on this channel and the podcast. If you want to support the show, I have both links to my donation page and my Patreon page below. All Patreon supporters will receive perks and exclusive video content. Let's get started with episode four of the Then and Now Blading interview series. All right. Well, Brian, it's great to see you again. It's been a long time. I think the last time I saw you in person was maybe at that TSS finals after party at Anthony Medina's place in Pflugerville, like in Man. 20 Pflugerville. 15 Man. or something. Yeah. Um, I just flew back from Europe the day before, or maybe even yeah. that day and ended up at the house and the whole posse was at Medina's. And I still have a photo. It's, I don't know if you saw it, but the one is you, me, Julian and William. Yeah, That's man. Great photo. Yeah. Man, dude, yeah, especially with it's the crazy. passing of Julian now, it's very yeah, man. It's nice to have some of those photos to hold on to those memories. Yeah, man. Big shout out to the Isaac family, man. That was you know hard for everybody, especially anyone that was you know who knew Julian or knew anyone that's from Texas and that that was aware of the the scene and and how much of an impact they had, you know, in such a short amount of time. Oh know? yeah, uh, incredible. I mean, everybody loved Julian and William, you know, like you could just see, I mean, I wasn't able to make it down to Texas for, yeah. you know, to wake or anything like that. Uh, but seeing the amount of people that showed up and all the people who did fundraisers and, yep. you know, lots of love. Were you able, yeah. did you go out there? Yeah, man, I did a last minute trip, like literally the, the day before. Okay. Um, which is a pretty interesting story too, to all that. But yeah, ended up going last minute. Um and that was actually around the day of um, day 1500 of my skating every day thing. So it was like, oh, wow, all going on just, you know, emotionally and just everything. But um, it was great, man. Like just to be able to see everyone. I hadn't seen anyone down there for about 10 years. It's been almost a decade since I've That's probably that time I saw you last time, right? Yeah. yeah. You know? um, what would you skate when you got to Houston? Uh, the first thing, well, I, I got there at night. So we went, I skated at like two o'clock in the morning before my flight at home. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then when we got there. Um, we went skating the next day. And uh, one of the homies, his name is Keith. He lives out there. And um, he has like this GPS of like all these skate spots and stuff. So he just picked out a spot. And uh, we ended up skating these uh, really cool curve ledges that um, people will see shortly in the footage and stuff that's about to come out soon um what's that gonna be in uh, it's what? gonna be on my like youtube vlog that i've been doing uh, okay i'm gonna stack in a little bit right now awesome um but uh it was cool because i just got to skate spots in houston that i've never seen before you know i've never skated or never seen anything so uh that was really cool houston's uh, insane for skating because yeah hey, you know, every time they have contests there it's like an hour drive from spot to spot but then you pass like a thousand spots so i'm like why couldn't they just go like a couple of spots we passed you know yeah, it's crazy but i mean a lot of the times too you get kicked out so quick a lot of these yeah that's for sure are, especially uh, downtown the these days yeah the spot that they took us to we actually got kicked out but we were just like we just thugged it out and just waited to the to the cops left and just skated it anyway but um yeah you know houston man it's it's a it's a, another world down there too man yeah it is did you uh skate there quite a bit when you lived in austin did you go to houston quite yeah. a bit or not yeah, actually, that was funny that, uh, you know, that was my first time or like in a lot. I mean, I can that I can remember actually flying into Houston. We mm -hmm. always drove to Houston, you know, never, never had to fly there. 
So I actually, <laughs> I actually got to the airport and I, I thought it was at um, the, um, I think it was like Bush Airport or something like that. But it ended up being at a totally different airport than than the homies were supposed to pick me up at. Oh yeah, so, there's two airports there. Yeah, like Southwest one, has their own airport, basically. Yeah, it's like they got one that's like close <laughs> to town, like one that's out in the skirts. So, uh-huh. like, that was hilarious. Um, just I just felt like just just like a rookie, like I didn't know. That's where, funny. Where <laughs> and you're no rookie when it comes to traveling, are you? Yeah, and it was, it was <laughs> the 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 abbreviation for the airport i assume that's what it was it was like ioh and i was assuming that was hobby airport so like mm-hmm. i just did everything super quick last minute just like glance at it i uh, talked to ryan stevens he was one of helping me out trying to like figure out what airport to go to and uh yeah it apparently was not the right airport they had a different abbreviation for the other airport that i was at i think it was a bush so yeah <laughs> that's pretty well, i'm glad it worked out in the end yeah, shout out to zane man shout out for zane for having to drive an hour and a half from the wrong airport to the airport to the oh, right zane, airport. zane's a good man i'm glad yeah, he was man. able to do that for you man i lo- love zane um so brian i'm going to introduce you because i didn't get to that part so you're brian freeman you've been skating for a long time now um originally from oakland moved to austin texas skateboarded then switched to rollerblading seeing yep. people like Shannon Rogers and Jason Howard skating at the park. Yeah, and so you stuck with, with skating, but in the meantime, you moved back to Oakland and that's where you've been living for quite a while now. The first time I met you was in Austin. If I remember correctly, correct me mm-hmm. if I'm wrong, but when I was living in San Diego, I yeah, came back were, to Austin to visit. You were a legend at this point too. Like when I was <laughs> There was like a handful of people who like, you know, the whole like made it out of Texas kind of thing, like just did stuff still in the industry. So like you was a big deal, like, you know, just well, thank you. Yeah. Hanging out with you, man. It was awesome, man. So I remember the first time I think I met you was when I came to visit for probably got like Christmas or something. And mm-hmm. I met up with Shannon and it was you, Shannon, Mason yeah. and Zach at P's yeah. Elementary Handicap Rail. Yeah. You remember that day? Was that the first yeah. time I met you? Yeah, that was, and it was freezing. It was freezing. Yeah. Well, you know, it was freezing for us back then. I live in Vermont yeah, yeah. now, so it's like, that's like summertime. <laughs> um, so, you know, growing up, that was your crew, right? Mason and Zach, and then Shannon was kind of like your dead mother. Take yeah, you guys man. around spot to spot, be yeah. a positive influence. Yeah, man, if it wasn't for them, I mean, like, I didn't really know about skating in the out world, you know, like, as far as, like, it being a huge culture, you know. Um, growing up in, in, in Round Rock, like, outside of Austin, um, you know, we had a very few people who were skating out there. Uh, Zach was, like, already, like, super good at the time that I met him, like, in school, like, you know, and, and um, you know, Mason and Alex, well, Dench, uh, Logan, he has so many names, but Dench. Yeah, Dench still kills it. Yeah, man. Um, and our little LST crew, you know what I mean? They're in, in Austin, part of it. Right. Um, but uh, that was who really, like, opened the doors and, like, and like hanging out with Jason and then, um, you know, Loretta having Connection Skate Shop at that time, too. That was that was, that was was a big deal. Um, and then the skate park at Ramp Ranch, I think that really – was where everything happened or like where everything kind of like meeting everybody really happened at Ramp Ranch. Um, and I met a lot of those guys like Shannon and Jay and Jason, and all those guys when I skateboarded, you know, I knew them right. before I even bladed. it. And um, I just thought it was cool, man. We were just, everyone was just good vibes. You know, I never, I never, you know, assumed it would be like a oh, skateboard blade thing or whatever. So when you first started blading, you were, it was at Ramp Ranch. Yeah, I mean that's well. When I first started playing, it was actually at the at my house and uh-huh. my neighbor across the street. Um, uh, his name was Alex. He's super sick. He uh, he lived across the street, and then he was skating this little you know those little P rails that you get from like Walmart or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Connect to ones that always fall apart. He was skating one of those outside, and I just like, I just wanted to try it. I just looked so fun. I was like, man, let me just try your skates on. They were too big, and I tried them anyway, and just was instantly hooked. And the next day I went to Connections and was like, Loretta, like, you know, I was skating for her for the skate, for the skateboarding stuff. Like that was one of my sponsors at the time. And I was probably like maybe like 14, 15. And I was just like, you know, I've been really thinking about trying to skate and, you know, it looks really fun. And I'm thinking about, you know, maybe trying that. 
And I just remember her face just like glow, just so big, like she was so pumped. She went in the back and just found some skates that she had and 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 just gave them to me right then and there. Man, that's sick. Yeah. Rico Loretta is amazing. Amazing yeah, woman. Yeah, I worked so at funny. that. You yeah. know, when it was the first the first skate park, the Intellect Rollers Realm down there in South Austin. Yeah, I managed that yeah. park for I guess the entire time was open. Then I went yeah. out to Ramp Ranch, but I was just deep, you know, living in Austin, the Ramp Ranch pretty far. Back then it was nothing. You're way in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah. So, you know, literally in the middle of nowhere, you get there and didn't even know if you're making it like every and, time. And now it's suburb. Now it's all like growth, you know, all the way to Ramp Ranch is just continuous city from Austin. Like it's crazy. Wow. So crazy, man. Um, so yeah. So back, back when you first started skating, who was like, the, what skater was the biggest influence on you? Uh, well, for sure, Jared Mayville. Um, he was like a, like, I don't know, man. He was just like this underground, just beast, man. I, um, the first time I ever met him was probably like a week into skating. And um, he picked us up or met us up at a skate spot. And um, in between Georgetown and Austin, it was called a Tico Westinghouse. If anyone ever in Texas knows or in Austin know about that spot, yeah. but it used to be perfect down rail. Perfect. Um, but back in the day, I mean, it was, it was big, you know? Um, so get this, we get to the spot and it's like me, I think uh, Zach was there. Uh, rest in peace, Tommy Coretta's, he was there. Tom Ace was there. Um, I think Alex was there too, Dan, she was there. Uh, but anyway, his thing was like, you know what? Cause, Cause we're trying to like scare to skate the rail. You know, I had been skating for literally a week. Like I just got skates. And, uh, and then I just met, the, just met him too, you know? So it was like, he was like, um, you know, if, you know, no one tries this thing, I'm just going to leave you guys here and leave. And then you guys are going to figure out your way home. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Like who? Yeah. Okay. So I ended up lacing this rail, like 10 stair, or I don't know how big it was. It was big though, but first time skating this big rail. And then that just kind of like, you know, I surprised myself, surprised everybody that was there. It's kind of like, okay, like this is, this is what it's about. And, and it really kind of like, I don't know, just, it just really, pump me up to just go for stuff you know and yeah. i think him being like that too that really opened a lot of doors and uh and and two for me it wasn't i didn't see a lot of you know black people skating you know like jason howard and shannon and and, and jared um mayville those guys those those are the ones that were doing it you know well jared's still around you know i skate with him yeah. quite a bit you know uh well, that's usually jared. usually that's at jared. uh cedar park that's jared jared mcbeth or do you, do you, you know what i'm no, talking about yeah and jared mayville yeah oh yeah sick yeah he's still around I know he's doing like art and stuff too. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not like you know in deep in the scene or anything, but he's blading, you know. Yeah, that's good. And um, he hit me up a couple times for some big wheel blades. That's so sick, man. Or at least you know, advice on him. Yeah, man. Him and and Jason. Like Jason was like, like, you know, he was instilled this video. You know, I remember just him picking us up at a skate spot or something at Ramp Ranch and like, you know, just sitting in the car with him. Just like, oh man. It's like crazy riding around with someone I'd seen on skate videos and stuff. Like I had never experienced that, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Jason's Point. awesome. Yeah, man. So that was cool. He was like, he was like the, like, like not necessarily the Hollywood figure of it, but he was like the one who made it, you know? And like, Jerry was like the like raw underground. Like it was just a good combination to see just all that, you know, especially in just Texas in general. Cause you know, we had Rob G come through. We had Matt Moya and had like, a lot of people come through there, you know. Yeah, but, Rob uh, G came, you know, I remember back in, you know, like he started coming out in like 97, 98 when Jason, you know, moved to Austin. And Rob G would visit every summer, stay there for a couple months. Yeah, man, they're and brothers, got, cool, man. And still too, Rob G, like, like all those people, like I, I feel like I was very blessed to be able to like kind of jump in the scene with already people who were like well-seasoned, you know. So it was kind of um, cool to just see – like what they had laid out, you know, and what, you know, the possibilities were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think I took it serious until later on, like, you know, the first few years, I feel like it just skating was just figuring it out, you know, and going to comps and stuff and all that. And, and um, I think the first trip out to when we came out to uh, the SD, the SD house and like come out to California the first time with like Zach and Ryan and right. Baye, Eric Baye, and uh, Randy, and yeah, I remember Rick that trip. <laughs> yeah, man, that was like heavy, man. That was such a big deal for us too, and and 
um, that was like fresh out of, out of school too, I think like right out of high school. Um, but um, it's crazy to think about how, how all those little pieces got to this point we're at now, you know, and, and still going, you know. So, so when did you end up moving to Oakland? I moved in 2011. Okay. So uh, I was just about to be 20. Uh-huh. When I was 20 and then, yeah, about to be 21. Yeah, because we, uh, I think we're just finishing up filming for charging maybe. Yeah, because we were uh, on my birthday. I remember getting, a, we were getting a clip in kansas city i believe yeah yeah man it's yeah jesus a long time man so uh, you yeah. know so after moving to oakland you did a lot of tours with adam johnson and everything mm-hmm. viberlux and yeah, cool. and you were living up in the bay area who were you yeah. skating with up there oh man the whole jsf crew. jsf everybody really- yeah, man, they really embraced the the welcoming and coming and, and and being there and being a part of like what they had going. You know, they're like the longest, oldest crew, you know, in skating. So it's pretty cool to see that transition of like all the vets, you know, like Victor Aries and um, Yvonne Nares and, and Eric Garcia. And um, at that time, too, a lot of the guys from New Jersey and 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 New York had moved out there, like the Shredweiser guys. So that was going on too. So we had like Bellino and um, Maddie Schrock was out there. Right. Like, yeah. And then we all got jobs working together. So it was just like working together, skating together. We had a great formula kind of going for a little while. And then, um, yeah. And then it just kind of changed. Everyone kind of dispersed it out and kind the of did the gentrification thing. came in and priced everybody out, huh? That too, man. It, it got, it just got really, I mean, it's still to, to this day. It's just really. Well, same thing in Austin too, you know. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, man, I still got to make it down there. Soon. Uh, you won't so, even recognize it. You won't, I recognize, heard that you too. won't recognize it. It's so crazy, like, right? It's not you even. Know, I mean, it's got two more, two million more people from when you left. <laughs> yeah, man. I think that's our, when, once like the South by Southwest start popping out crazy more like than it was. And then like, the X Games come in and all that just like took off from there. South by Southwest is definitely the Dude. thing, the catalyst to change Austin. If it, yeah. you, know, you didn't have that festival, it would be probably the way it was, you know, back when we yeah. lived there. And, and the Austin city limits too, that one too, like all yeah. that stuff. But uh, yeah, the scene out here was like cool because everybody out here was here, you know, like it was like just, you know, literally a, a movie, you know, it's just as cliche as it sounds like when you go to California you know, the, the weather, the perfect spots and just all that. It's pretty true, you know? Um, right. But it was yeah, cool I mean, to merge that whole LST and JSF kind of like collab thing coming together. So well, that's two pretty, great crews. So that's pretty yeah, special to be part of both of them, you know? Yeah, man. Very cool. Um, now I'm going to fast forward a little bit back to last year. Um, okay. I watched your Oakland Dream section earlier. And oh, in the beginning, you were talking about the wildfires last year and how you should be you know how bad the air quality was and you know you should be wearing a mask and now you have wildfires up there again is that the same situation up in oakland with the air quality yeah man so like it's it's been so crazy the last like two two years two three years basically um but whenever uh jp shout out to jp from butter tv from new york uh when he came out you know that was like crucial time the fires were so bad at that point too um and for us to still be able to make something through it uh, was kind of just unreal, man. Like it really was on something like you probably would not want to be doing, you know, especially how we were, we were like really scaling, like going out, finding mm-hmm. stuff and everything. So, um, and it's crazy because, you know, we're wearing the mask and all that. And now it's become more of a, a norm thing. And, and, um, now that I'm a little bit further up north, there's a lot more fires. And like just in general in California, it's just been on fire. <laughs> like, no joke, man. Um, I moved about a year ago, um, a little further up north. And uh, as soon as we moved in, maybe about like a month or two into it, we had to evacuate because there was a fire like so bad that we had to evacuate. Um, and I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Like, Where you know, you're at then? Um, like I'm outside like Sacramento. Like that's okay. All right, so yeah, so I'm still, I'm still out here, but just just a little bit further up because you know it's just so 
expensive everywhere. So yeah, for sure. I'm just figuring things out. But for what I have planned and like what my end goal is for the future, like that's this is this is where I would have to try to make it happen. Um, so the Be Free Blading Academy, you've been doing that for a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, and with the wildfires last year and COVID, like were you doing a lot? You probably were doing a lot less in person classes and a lot more like online, or were you just taking a well, which is crazy because when I when I started doing the the, the school. Um, I was doing like a, a hybrid, you know, mm-hmm. I was doing online classes and I was doing in-person classes. Um, and especially like in Oakland too right now, it was just kind of like just a skate pot. Like everyone is quad skating or just skating in general, just really kind of got really busy with that in, in Oakland, uh, which was great to see. And especially during the pandemic, a lot of people started skating a lot more. Um, but um, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I was already set up doing online courses and stuff. And like, that's what I was going with. And uh, I just felt like, you know, people would reach out from all over the place who couldn't be, you know, in-person lessons. So I right. still want to be off or something like that. So I was doing that. I was just literally going on from a house on the corner of the street and doing it right there, you know, like just in the hood on the corner, doing it like, you know, now thinking about it now, it's like crazy to think about it, but, uh, um, it really shaped everything that's happening now. Like if I hadn't been doing that before the pandemic and stuff, I would have been kind of like scrambling around, figuring out how to, how to, um, hustle through it and make it, make it through that. That was a real big transition. Um, you know, cause I wasn't working a nine to five and thing that was solely my, my job, you know, that was solely my completely two feet in, um, I think up until that point, it really made me realize that too. Like you couldn't really just be one foot in and then one foot out and other thing else. You really had to be completely all the way in it. So um, that was definitely a blessing in disguise because I don't know what I would have did. That would have been hard to figure out, um, but it worked out. And it also helped me help other people who were doing classes who need or who were trying to figure out how to translate it into doing it online, like skate mm-hmm. IA and, and uh um go sport usa and stuff like that so it was really cool to be able to help those those entities too in it and and kind of showcase and show how it was possible you know we could still make make things work and and interact with people even if it's just like this how we're doing it right now so so you're exclusively doing online lessons right now yeah right now i'm doing completely online you know Mm -hmm. um i just didn't want to put anyone in any kind of uh, for sure even I figured if, I figured that's the best way to do it, you yeah, know. So I mean, I'm gonna still try to do events and stuff that are just like kind of like a group thing, mm-hmm. um, just so it's kind of more spaced out instead of me meeting up with a whole bunch of individual people like that. Because um, my biggest thing, you know, I got a family too, so I'm not, not trying to put anyone else's family in in anything or mine. So I just want, um, you know, people to be smart what they're doing, you know, and look out for each other, you know. What right. I mean? I'm trying to be selfish or or anything so i feel like that's that's the way to to go about it but uh yeah i know man we're still here still rocking still doing classes Shout that's out awesome i see your youtube channel right now you're at 7.98 thousand subscribers that's a pretty good number so you only need 200 you said 7.9 yeah 7.9 thousand subscribers yeah, on your youtube i've seen that's crazy man and Damn. you need 200 more people to get eight thousand. so everybody watching this show Make sure to subscribe to Be Free. Get them up to the 8,000 followers. Oh, subscribers Thank mark. Um, back to the your your blading academy. Did you get like skate IA certified or are you? Yeah, man. Yeah, I did the whole legit thing, man. I um, Me and actually Eric Garcia, we flew out to Seattle and went there and took the class and did everything. Met Trish, did all that um, so that I could have just the credentials, you know what I mean? I wanted to make sure like if I did something, someone could look me up and be able to find like, you know, this is something, you know, professional. This wasn't like some like random person doing some classes or whatever. So I wanted to show that that there there was some kind of basis to it. And then I just kind of, you know, everything that they were doing too was kind of a little bit different than exactly what, you know, we do, you know, with aggressive stuff. So I just wanted to merge all that you know and Mm -hmm. and on the way to make it work for 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 this you know so um so we got certified um and tried to do at the time i was i was skating for k2 at the time too and um 
and we went to the headquarters and everything um because that was all right there in seattle so i was trying to right. do like multiple things at once while i was there I even took my family had my daughter my, my lady out there we were out there um so that was a whole thing um but I'm glad that we did that because that was a learning experience in itself, you know, um, just, just every part of it, you know? Um, but I think big shout out to Trish and the Skate IA community because that's been going on forever. That's like 30 plus years. That's a, that is a, a beacon in the industry and a lot of people don't really recognize that or even give it as much credit as they should because right. without teachers, how are you going to have the knowledge to get people out here? A lot of people don't have that just etiquette you know a lot of people you know it, i just think the the school stuff needs to be more emphasized on you know there's no award stuff for none of that stuff there's a there's a there's all these other stuff but nothing like catering to just that too or, or even inviting that into it so i'm hoping that changes around hoping these magazines and these co other companies and brands who do that stuff they start paying attention to that because like you know go sport usa you know, Skate IA, um, Blading Camp, you know, there's all these things that are out here that are like really behind the scenes of trying to like get people into skating. And a lot of times that is really what um, is going to help get our industry, you know, 10 years from now, you know, that's, that's what watering the seeds is about, you know? Right. So, cause that's, that's all I think about is like the future. I'm thinking about 10 years from now, I'm thinking, Oh, for 50, sure. You know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about ways, how can we make skating be more like water? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, you know, that's been my, my motivation as well. Yeah, and man. with yeah. the skate IA, like, obviously, you know, definitely more people need to be in tune with it, but it's got a lot more exposure, a lot more people joining it in the past, you know, four years than ever before, especially in aggressive skating. Yep. And and with the crossover of disciplines, so you know people can do aggressive and you know just teaching somebody how to basic skating and all that stuff. And it's definitely simple for people to join Skate A and do the the instruct you know to get certified. But I think a big problem most people will have is marketing their services. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to become Skate A certified and then be able to kind of market Perfect. themselves and find some customers? Okay. Well, first thing I would suggest is that you, you, you still want to be like a beacon, like, you know, don't, don't be the kind of person who gets the skate A thing and then like, just, you know, completely write them off and not even like try to support that. But you should definitely find a way to keep it simple, you know, and, and you have to stay consistent. That is the biggest secret of, of anything is just staying consistent. If you start a Instagram account, if you start a website, if you start anything that you're doing, the consistency behind it is really what it is. Um, and also being able to be in tune with your demographic, you know, and and your, um, you know, your your location and your surroundings and what you are able to do. Um, I think for me it was a little bit different just because I had already an established platform just on myself as as far as just skating and just in a career at, at its own so having having the skate school was kind of like an icing on the cake kind of thing so mm -hmm. i think if you are starting from ground zero and you're working your way up to that that's that's definitely a road that you just have to stay consistent with um so marketing be a beast about it um you know get second opinions you know don't 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 feel like you have to um you know, not necessarily listen to what everyone's saying, but but still get some other opinions and stuff too. Like if you have an ad or something, like run it by your friend. Like, what do you think about this? You know, a lot of that stuff too helps. You get that other confidence, you know. Yeah, constructive criticism is definitely, you know, most people succeed, they can listen, you know, yeah, and, and understand where people come yeah. from, except there's, the stubborn people. Yeah, there's no, hear it. <laughs> yeah, there's no like, super secret to success you know it's just I, if i knew it i'd tell you you know there's no there's no you know i'm still looking for it i don't i don't feel like i'm even near where i want to be at you know i'm still still grinding still moving forward still figuring out what's the next thing um just stay hungry too that's my biggest thing like stay stay don't stay content like don't think like this is it and then that's just how it's going to be constantly evolving and growing you know that's that's always it 
that would be the, the 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 icing on the cake for real yeah from your jump street interview you'd been working at that point you'd been working with flying eagle but now you're skating for icon yep skating for icon man. and which is an exciting new brand which there's not too many new brands that come out and this is a you know a pretty crazy brand because they have so much stuff you know like oh, oh, every gosh. wheel you can think of at every size you know yeah. ufs it's... frames trinity frames you know 165 mount frames rec skates nope. aggressive skates everything yeah and man. and you're one of the you know the first guys on the team um and how how did you get approached to become a part of icon man well first off big shout out to icon and shout out to to Montre and 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 everybody involved like um i mean me and trey have been friends since the beginning like we're both kind of coming up around the same time as far as like just you know even though we have a little bit of age difference but we're we're around the same people in the right same time of um just that that era you know and uh, we always talked about like doing something again like or just just collabing or something or just anything um so one of the first things was um i was actually actually the one to get him be put on on viberlux okay. we had a meeting at dom at dom bamrick's house one year i think it was at a, a, a bitter cold showdown i'm assuming um but um that was the first thing was like getting involved in viberlux that was huge that was so sick um and then and then we kind of figured out like we figured out something that we wanted to do but uh he reached out and was like hey i got this project that i'm about to do um you know you were one of the first people that they had thought about doing this with you know they didn't know what your terms were with with uh with with flying eagle and stuff and um at the time you know i've been invested so much in like the time with like flying Eagle because i have you know the potential of like what it could be and what they were trying to do and just like trying to help them grow you know um right. and which it was you know it definitely opened up a lot of doors or just rem or reminded a lot of people what it was like to not have aggressive skates but have rec skates and be able to customize them and figure out a way that you can start aggressive skating in them or, or you know whatnot um or just taking off the sole plate and finding the one that you can fit on there um but um when 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 Montre reached out to me it just was kind of like just a, a no-brainer you know it was just like well I'm I'm excited to just be able to work with the homies you know and then he was telling me he was going to be on the team and stuff like that and and or who he had in mind uh, we were still waiting for everyone to kind of you know say it so they were down um but yeah man I mean I it's it was kind of like just um I don't know man it's just like a like a, like a dream you know not necessarily a dream but just like it, cool to, to be able to now I didn't have to like you know I didn't want to have to have to start completely over as far as like explaining what skating is and and what if we did this or this and this to make it look like this you know everyone right. already knows has been in the game long enough they know so I don't have to I don't have to do that so that was cool to kind of let that let that um that stress or just that that thought go you know so um you know, I haven't made it basically really public yet. And you know, this is probably the first time anyone watching this interview is really kind of seeing me really talk about the whole Flying Eagle stuff and then the transition into this. Um, that's why I haven't been posting any clips, you know. Right. So once once things are smooth and out and you'll see that the, everything's going to be kind of like, you'll see the story to it. So that's going to mm. be coming on the YouTube channel. So if anyone's watching. I did see your unboxing video. You unboxed oh, yeah. the icon <laughs> frames and the yeah. wheels. Uh, have yeah. you skated those yet? Yeah, man. So the okay. So the first thing I just need to say really quick about the frames and the wheels and the bearing setup, just this new technology that they're doing, where they are creating that space between the wheel and the frame, and that just alone, um, it's like you're you're floating. It's like you're skating on a cloud. Like you cannot feel. It's sounds amazing. Rolling on air, like right can't explain until you actually try and I know a lot of people it's kind of hard to like see stuff without really knowing until you actually get it but I mean if you like going fast man that is it bro it's like 
And I know now like I've seen you like been doing a whole bunch of the big wheel stuff. And it's cool because, you know, 10 years ago, you know, the aggressive scene emerging with the blading stuff was kind of like, you know, there it was keeping it separate. Yeah. So now there's a lot of the merging happening and realizing a lot of that respect needs to be there too. Cause no, for at, sure. the of, at the end of the day, it's skating, like you're blading, you're on wheels, you're going like if, if, it all needs to be united for the sport to grow as a whole, you know? And especially people who are getting older too, like all everything, even if you're not older, if you're young, getting into it too. Like, um, I know that if I've never been one of those people that like want to go to the gym and work out and stuff, like it, when I'm in my sixties and seventies, better believe I'm about to be big wheeling somewhere or just anything. If I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. just cruising around being on skates period. Um, but the transition with these frames, like just having that big wheel set up and, and still doing the aggressive stuff and just being able to go back and forth with that, I think is, it's amazing. I think everyone should be, you know, supportive, even if it's not your thing, you know, you don't have to dog it or, or not. Right. It. You know, it's, it's just something different. Are you doing you know? any uh, tricks on your big wheel setup? Now, uh, me personally, I, you know, I haven't gone like crazy with like doing like gaps and doing crazy stuff. Like mm-hmm. a lot of these people have been doing, which is really sick. It's kind of like reminds me of like the people who've been doing the BMX stuff with like um, fixed gear bikes, you right. know? So I, uh, me personally, I really just treat it just for the, 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 the A to B. Like, mm-hmm. of course, getting little jumps and all, doing all that stuff. But it's like, I really treat it for that, for that reason, you know, just Commuting. for yeah and just mashing and, and right. all. I think that's bombing just, hills i like yeah yeah um big wool and stuff i feel like you just for me personally i feel like i'd be close to just you know especially if you're doing stuff on like the the 110s and 125s and you're doing like crazy stuff on that i me personally i'm just like i would i would break my ankle like i would just well i think what's I, exciting yeah. about that you know with the icon is there's all those wheel sizes that you, you can, can do start you that. can start practicing because you were right yeah. for them so you yeah. can start you know stepping up a few millimeters yeah if I every week pull out, <laughs> pull out a big hammer on the on the on the big 125s yeah it'd be crazy but i mean i personally i mean i feel it for everyone that that does that does that or just wants to do stuff like that i dig it do it do do what makes you feel good about it when you're on your skates you know um i haven't i mean i'm still new to the big one stuff like i like i my first big wheel setup was when I got some from Flying Eagle, you know, which wasn't that too long ago. Um, and so like, you know, all that stuff is still, still, still new, you know? Um, and I just have respect for all of it, even with like quad skating stuff, like, mm-hmm. all that. like, you know, even if, if I may not be doing it or, or having to be able to do it, I'm still supporting it, you know, like I'm not going to be like, Oh, that's just not tight. I'm not doing that, you know, because there's so many good people at what they do. Like, there's so many good, like, Nick Lomax is really sick at big wheel stuff. Like, that's yeah, like, super crazy sick. Stuff. Bunch so, of those the English guys, Danny yeah, Aldridge, Cy you know, Coburn. Yeah. And like, Montre is like amazing with doing mm-hmm. the quad stuff. Like, he's got doing that with sponsorship with that stuff. So, like, that's sick. Like, do that. You know what I mean? So, whatever you, whatever you can whatever you can think of and you feel juiced about it, man, please do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about what people think. Do your thing. You know what I'm saying? So what are you expecting your skates? I know with, with COVID, you know, everything got pushed back, which is unfortunate, but have you, you tried getting some soon, right? No, oh, man. Have you tried shipping anything to, to international anywhere? It is mm-hmm. crazy right now, but uh, hopefully soon, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting to see what, uh, what, what uh what we're gonna put out and get get things going i can't wait to just show everybody i can't wait for i can't wait to see you on them yeah what we've been working on and what we've been waiting on and what we've been talking about and what we got planned and Mm -hmm. and man it's just it's been hard it's been really hard keeping just chilling i mean i'm so used to posting stuff every day you know i post well you guys have been marketing it very well with you know the limited things you have to show right now you know so Thank Once you, you guys have a full inventory, you know, and everybody's got their hands on things, it's going to be pretty yeah. amazing to see what everybody comes up with, yeah. especially, you know, like, you know, you has your own YouTube channel, you know, yeah. and uh, Chad Hornish, you know, he's like an Instagram star now. Yeah. He's, he's like, you know, 2 million views on his last video. <laughs> yeah, he's bugging out. 
I was like, you need, to, you need to put that on, yeah, put that on YouTube or some sort of channel. I think, does he have a channel? I don't think so. Nah, he was yeah. talking about it, you yeah, know. He needs to, but then okay. on his Jump Street interview, he's like, I don't want to do no YouTube, you know, like. Listen, like- just say this. Ricardo, <laughs> Ricardo was was so smart to, to educate people on that, like, you know, at that time. He was saying, like, if every pro skater had a channel, if they just made one and just post their content on it, it didn't have to be a a vlog or whatever they don't have to be a youtube and all that stuff but they're using that platform to put their stuff on they can use as a source of income like that two million views that he got on the on the video if he would have put if that was a reel on 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 his channel he would have you know that could have been something he could have he could have used to to next thing you know so i think nowadays a lot of people have to be really really in tune with like the marketing especially right because now you got like you know, Bitcoin, you got NFTs, you got, you got all these different resources of ways to, to make income for yourself as a professional skater. Cause nowadays, like what is a professional skater? You know, it's hard. Um, if you aren't fig- making a way to figure out how you can make skating be something to help you put food on the table, then, you know, you really have to have a passion for it. Like a hundred percent. If you don't have a passion for it, the, the then, you know, you, the expectation of like getting things and doing all this stuff is going to be, is going to, going to be hurtful. You know, it's going right. to, gonna... I mean, there's definitely a lot of ways, you know, if you're creative and that's the thing though, you know, you have to be able to, you know, know how to use the resources sure. available to you. So some right. research, you know, studying. Yeah. It's just starting is the secret because yeah. of course, when you start off something, you're not going to be perfect at it. It's not going to mm-hmm. be that end result that people see for now. It's the process is that, you know, if you look at my first video and all the way up until now, how crazy different it is. Like I was right. just, uh, I, I was same thing like Chad, like I did not want to do the YouTube stuff for a long time. I didn't, I didn't think about it. You know, I just, you know, and, and look enough, my lady was convincing enough to just do it, just make, make a thing, you know? And, um, and now, you know, now you, what you said it was like 7.9 or whatever, like that's crazy, you know, to think about, um, and it not even be um, something just constantly thinking about. Like, I'm not thinking about, oh, I got to get followers. And I mean, I mean, how many videos it, have you put up? Like, it looks like a lot. A lot, man. Because like at, <laughs> well, at, first, at first, I was doing just single clips. Like, I was just uh-huh. putting, like, what the reel is today. Like, just right. putting a real clip. I was doing that on YouTube. So I was mm-hmm. putting, like, 10-second clips on there and not really realizing what I was doing. But I, don't know, I guess now that's coming back, too, on there. But um but, you know, figuring it out, just having to start, you know, I was doing so many different things. I try something, maybe it didn't work, then try something else. And then if that worked, you know, then weren't run with that for a minute. And then if it didn't work, then switch it up. But uh, I think the biggest tip out of anything of that is you just got to start somewhere, like get out of doubting yourself, get out of the, the you know, don't let your ego get in the way, get that thing out of there and just get it going. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then figure it out as you go. But uh, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still figuring it out. Well, you look <laughs> like you're doing good. And uh, it's fun to follow you on YouTube, you know, and I can't wait to see where everything goes with you in your future. It, um, you know, in the past few years have really changed in aggressive skating. You know, we've been around for like 30 years. And I think COVID helped. But in the past couple of years, you've seen the sport really mature. The industry matured. The companies mature. Yeah, everybody's man. older everybody's a little bit wiser you know yeah, and and there's a lot of you know <laughs> you know cool things happening with them you know god's paying people a lot more royalties collaborations Absolutely. you know yeah. and a lot of love from you know diff- outside media and yep. it's been great and what's the what are some of the most exciting things you've seen happen in skating the past couple of years man um well, for one, for sure, I have to say, like, doing the Braille thing, like, that, like, everything changed a lot after that, after those little first videos that we did, especially the one we brought out, Intuition, and, like, and, and Damon Franklin, and um, I think that was a big um, shift. I know maybe a lot of people may not think about it, but that, it was, I never seen him, so many people hit me up about skate stuff, like, just random people, you know, people who have never even been in the culture. And then it just really opened my mind to like how 
how big everything is. You know, it's not our small little football huddle. There's just so many people out there that are just curious about stuff too, who just don't know yet, you know, and still figuring it out. So that really shifts my, my, my attention on like, you know, what my lane, I guess, would be like in skating, like, um, you know, I want to be relatable to the, to the beginner skater, to the intermediate skater, to the advanced skater, and so on, to the OG, you know, and, and everything in between. So that spectrum really, um, it really showcased during that time, because, you know, that video got up for like 2 million views or whatever. And then every one that we've done after that, there was always something uh, shift from, from that. And then, um, you know, that's just on a personal one, just seeing that in person with that change. Um, and two with the skate shop too, that was like huge for the skate shop for intuition. Like, like, yeah, man, for, people just didn't see skating in a long time. Or like, it's crazy to think about it though, like that, but it's true. A lot of people have just not seen it like that or just seen, um, you know, like the blading cup and stuff like that, that when that was televised on, on, on TV at that one point, that was a few years ago, that was one big checkpoint. Um, I think also Frankie and like Julian and Damon and Coco and Dave Lang and all those guys doing the uh, the movie the Battle La Battle Battle Angel Alita or Alita the Battle Angel. Oh yeah, that was that amazing. Too, I think that and also with John doing that too in the Volo days, getting the product placements in uh, Zach Pilgrim versus the World or something. I never saw that. So that was another. So all these little like product placement stuff. I think that mm -hmm. is a big cultural shift if we can make skating be um like i said earlier like water right it should be where it's not like an exotic animal like oh like people still do that or like you know people always right. skate or like i'm so tired of hearing that <laughs> but like yeah like it's skating is should be something that is just as as a part of the culture as putting on a t-shirt putting on a hat like i'm putting on my skates like that's that's where i can't wait for it to be at and that's another reason why I've been doing that, you know, the skate every day thing is, you know, I want you to be just constantly seeing skating, you know, mm -hmm. um, the whole world knows what a Royale is. I always say that, you know, so. Yeah, it might not be every day, but it seems like at least every week now there's something, you know, out there yeah. outside of blading, talking about yeah. blading and how cool it is or whatever. Yeah. And, and it's, I'm it's hyped starting on, to happen, starting to happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm hyped on the fact that it's, it's tampering into different things like the art, music, fashion. I think that's a big deal. Um, and I can't wait to see what Icon is going to bring to the table. And I can't wait for, for people to feel involved and be a part of it. Cause that's really what it is. Like we're, we're a group of people who, um, are all just, um, vibrant with people, you know, and I feel like that's going to be really sick. It's not going to be anything like, you know, just too cool for school kind of thing. And, right. You know, I just want people to feel a part of skating, you know, from little baby to, old man old woman mm -hmm. you know that's 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 what it is well i and think with montre fronting that project you know montre is in my opinion he's always been the best ambassador for blading you know he's oh, always yeah. like the nicest dude at the park you know i grew up in this era of skating where you know people were too cool for school and they were not nice little kids at the skate park you know like they didn't want to talk to him whatever and montre yeah. is like every kid's best friend that's you know? right he goes that's to the park he's every kid's best friend you know with blading camp all that stuff like does yeah, anybody he, represent a, a brand you know, so positively? Cool. It's yeah. Montre. So yeah, it's man. great to see that project with you guys involved with it too, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm stoked. That's, that was one of the other reasons too, why I was like, you know, really juiced about the idea, you know, um, when we talked about like just where our goals were and what we were trying to represent and what we were trying to bring to the table, you know, that was definitely a topic brought up, you know, and, 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 I feel like too, you know, he's, we're, we're like seasoned, you know, it's like you, if you don't know who Montre is, you know, you can, you know, you better look him up, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's kind of where it's at. And um, I think that's what skating needs right now. We need mm -hmm. more of that. We need more of those grassroots stuff. Like that is the real secret to everything, making it work and making it grow and not just in our little football huddle, but everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So um, I just, you know, it, it's crazy because of COVID, you know, and everything, putting things on, on hold, like, but still people are still doing stuff, still making stuff work, but 
you know, it really changed and shifted a lot and put stuff on hold and stuff. So yeah, you can't wait till things start really moving again and really going. So it's starting if, if that happens, yeah, it's a yeah, whole new yeah. world, you know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping like Blade Cup and stuff, everything is is you know that's still speaking going. of Blade Cup, you know, twenty thousand dollar prize purse this year. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. insane. You know, yeah, that's first, insane. You know, that's amazing. That's that's you know? how it should be. You know, yeah, I mean? oh for sure. You know, that's like uh you know that. those cops back in the day were like that you know i yeah. mean they had outside they had a lot of corporate you know advertising and stuff you know back yep. when people rode for nabisco and got and all the free weeders that they wanted you know yeah, and that's <laughs> where we're at now too we need it we need to get it to that point where it's like you know a lot of these corporate brands who are in those positions to help really make shifts into skating you know um it was really interesting to see how a lot of those bigger brands like that were just so disconnected away from what was going on. So right. I learned that real, real tough, you know? So um, it's great to see, you know, people like John doing that and, and, and still keeping things going and just not giving up, you know, and then the support, you know, no one would be anything without the support from people watching this and people support and buying stuff. And, and cause if it, that doesn't, if that doesn't work, then it, it makes everything crumble and, and stop. So um, just know that everything that you guys are doing out there, just know it is it is much appreciated. And, and that's what keeps it going. Um, you know, I've done plenty of comps. When I first moved to Oakland, that was the first thing I did, you know, start the Oakland Blade Jam, you know. Um, and even in Texas, doing the Texas skate droughts and like just all that stuff. So I feel like you you gotta you gotta you gotta do something to help move the needle you know mm -hmm. and, and it, it may be a little bit or maybe a lot but as long as you're moving it you know what i mean it's going forward and not back you know well that's a big problem you know blings that or aggressive skating you know it has a lot of people to do it and a lot of people have ideas but there's very few people throughout the years who've actually do it had right? the motivation to do it now yeah. with the sport growing in size you also have more people doing stuff you Damn know yeah. um and, and, new and you have people coming in back you know a lot of these back to blading guys you yeah. know some of them are coming back with some sort of good degrees the skills that they can actually use to do cool things within the sport it's yeah. you know pretty exciting lots of possibilities yeah. happening yeah, here yeah man so. and that's that's what we need man that's we need you know, and I say too, like even with the corporate stuff and like, you know, it being us making our own things too, there needs to be like, you know, there's those right brands that are doing stuff with each other, right? You got to have those right, those right collaborations, you know, mm -hmm. um, it will have those, those different spectrums, you know, like you have crazy different um endorsements you know that may not have no idea about skating you know they're just looking as as a as a as a you know marketing gimmick or whatever right so you know to me at the end of the day you know if you're in the sport and you and you do it because you love it if you're in the sport you do it because you love it but you're trying to also you know provide for your family and and make it work you know you have to find those ways to make make things be accommodating you know um and i'm just always trying to stick to my, my path of heart i've always call it that just just stick to what you believe in you know um and i think that'll always lead to you where you're supposed to be at you know yeah. so well said this is the thing man i can't wait to see you know i can't wait to see you know twenty thousand dollars i can't wait to see twenty thousand people there yeah, you know right. <laughs> that's, that's that's what i'm trying to you know that mashup right so you know i think right now blading is in such a beautiful state right now and there's i think a lot of times too there needs to be a lot more acceptance to these other things that are coming into skating you know or like people that are coming into it that may have not been there 10 years ago so there needs to be a little more uh, understanding of that um you know, and not like, you know, excluding them, you know, they're not a part of this, you know, that stuff. I just feel like everyone should be um, at least given the opportunity, like just like the doors are open, you know, if you stay here and you, you do it, that's cool. But if you don't, you know, the door's still open, you know what I mean? Right. So that's how, I, that's how I'm rocking with it. So right. well, that's the best way to do it. So who else are you skating for? Anybody other than Icon? 
So go to the list, man. Okay. Um, I mean, so Icon would be one. Mm-hmm. Wish Frames. Um, Wish Frames, okay. Marvelux for sure. I mean, that's just like crew. Ghetto Community, that's something new. I had like some other outdoor stores that I do like stuff like with our brands trying to like, you know, I'll do stuff like a watch brand or maybe mm-hmm. I'll do with like um, an outside brand. Like I even did stuff with a skateboarding brand that wasn't, it wasn't a skateboarding brand, but it was a lifestyle brand that was based with that. So that was cool. I did that for a little bit. That's with the uh, kinetic. Um, so I just, what I try to do is I try to just flow within things that just kind of work and make sense to do, you know? Right. But right now my main focus is, you know, doing this with, with, with icon, um, you know, with the, with the be free blade Academy, um, intuition skate shop, it's yeah. great to see he opened a new look that new location. It's very cool. Yeah, like, like thinking about this stuff, I'm like, oh man, what do I have? <laughs> so many things. Yeah, but, I'll, be, uh, I'll be talking to him in two weeks or a week. Yeah, yeah cool. Probably, We're gonna have so, some good stuff to talk yeah. about too. Yeah, so, man. You know, I have a lot of history with Matt from you know that prime era of blading. Yeah, you know, early two thousands. Oh, he's twenty plus years. <laughs> Like Matt is like like if it wasn't for people like that who who have stuck stuck with it like. Mm-hmm. Like they deserve to have everything that they they have right now. You know, oh, he's got the passion. He's had the passion. Yeah, man. Like, he's also been a great ambassador for the sport. You dude, know, those are the people. Well spoken. Yeah, man, and a character, man. Like, yeah. dude, if you ever watched the Braille thing, she's, him on there was just awesome, man. He was just on there killing it. But um, that's that's kind of where I'm at, and I have like you know little collapse and stuff about to happen. I'm excited about, and then um, um, right now. I'm just really just focusing on like the school stuff and trying to figure that out and getting it to where, um, you know, the COVID really just, it changed a lot of stuff that I had planned mapped out for 2021, Mm -hmm. even 2020, like 2020 was just like (laughs) really crazy, but I'm, I'm grateful for, you know, still being healthy and the family healthy and, and and big shout out to anyone that had lost anybody or, had to deal with that during that time or is dealing with it now because that is serious and I think it sucks for people to have to get too close to it for them to realize how serious it is you oh, know? Yeah. So, I mean I, I know a lot of people who've died and yeah, you know same. and who right are away, you're too, like, future, you're having permanent you know problems because of it yeah bro so it's not a game so no. you know, be smooth out there and just you still gotta you know, stay dangerous out there, but still stay smooth and stay smart what you're doing, you know what yep. I'm saying? So, oh, 100%. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. That's well, 100%. That's all the questions I have for you today. Um, I don't know if there was anything you want to touch, touch base on that I didn't mention. Um, I mean, I'm just hyped that you did this. When you hit me up and reached out to do like a big wheel blading thing, you know, I've never considered myself like a big wheel blading guy. Yeah. Like, I love skating. So. Well, it's not really a big wheel blading thing. It's oh, like it's it's oh, tied man. in with big wheel blading. It's so good. it's it's that's, a new it's a new YouTube channel I'm doing. Good, that's and awesome. And you're the fourth good, person. Was, like, you're the fourth was, person I've interviewed for it, and oh, it's, oh, it's going to be a mix of aggressive skating and big wheel blading. Good, and it's, it's a lot oh. of, about my history in skating. So a lot of people I talk to are people I've had history with personally. Good. And I've been it's, digging your, I've been digging your vlogs. You've been doing, you've been Vermonting or what? Yeah, yeah, my it? Vermonting. Yeah, yeah, man. And because I, because I'm, I'm, you know, that homestead stuff is so real. Like making stuff and and the garden beds and all that stuff and chicken coops and. I got so many videos I'm working on right now, but they're like, pain in the ass. Yeah, I, I, like I, when I talk to you, you know, like this. When I talk about skating. You know, I can, yeah. I can actually like formulate sentences when yeah. I'm holding the camera to my face talking about like stuff in the <laughs> woods like I'm like doing 150 takes on every sentence you know it's like drives me crazy but that's okay um, <laughs> that's all right you're killing it man it's cool man. You're, and look you're doing something different imagine like you know six months from now you're gonna have it dialed in so well so this channel too so it's, I'm doing interviews like I said yeah. like this and and but the interviews are a little bit different like the first one was Chris Peel who uh, worked at Daily Bread when I did. He was like the designer for Daily Bread. He was the guy who came up with the, the 4x4 logo, the Nim logo, the Vicious logo, the Rattel logo, like all the original branding, like all, almost all the ground control branding. So that's the first guy I talked to. And so, you know, I have so much content, photos over the years, video. So it's more of a mini documentaries than just an interview with somebody's watching just you and me talking face. You know, it's there's stuff going to be over it, like, you know, from old videos, old photos, so a little bit more documentary style with these interviews. Then 
I have about 400 plus tapes, mini DV, VHSC, yeah, I eight. I've been capturing those. Each okay. one will be an episode. So it's going to go back all the VHSC from Jason Howard when he's like 15 years old. Oh, um, and I'll be like, you know, I'll be logging a tape with Jason and <laughs> other people, and we'll be doing commentary over those skate sessions. So it'll be like, you know, raw footage with commentary over it. Yeah, so all of that. That's the, the other content, you know, and then it'll just be some, you know, it's just some other stuff. But it's going to be like all skating, but, you know, it's going to go across the board, mainly aggressive, but across the board. And it's going to tie in with big wheel blading so this our interview will also be a story on big wheel blading good that's that's you know? what i'm that's what so i'm hoping for. it's like a lot of cross you know cross yeah. promotion with the be, two it should be a hybrid a hybrid you know what i mean ah. so you know because like you know when you hit me up about it i was i was i was on like like i was like oh wow that's crazy the thing about me to be on there because like i'm you know you know didn't do any big wheel stuff like that crazy i'm gonna have a couple of videos doing stuff right but, you know, but I just think it's cool and, and and I appreciate you just doing what you've been doing and what you've done and you know, um well, the thank legacy. You. you know, it's it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to keep going. It's so easy to quit and stop doing what you're doing. You know, that's like so easy to do that. But right. what we're doing, that's that's what's that's what's hard. That's what really, you know, that's what really shows your character, you know. So it's the, as, as our good friend Tommy used to say, man, it's the hard times that makes us, man, you know, so keep, keep that, same, sure. that same vibe, that same energy, man. And anytime you need, need something or hit me up, man, I'm, I'm, I'm around. I will do. Do you uh, have any shout outs or anything to yeah, this up with? Shout out to my family. Shout out to um, everyone that's watching this, man. Shout out to Icon. Shout out to uh, Montre. Shout out to Chad. Shout out to Sasha. Shout out, shout out to Mia, to Catherine, um, shout out to um, the Blade Gang set, to Ghetto Community, to um, the VX crew. You already know uh, everybody, man. I just, just the whole Blade community, man. And Be Free Blade Academy, all the students, man, and everyone who's just been tapping in, watching the skate everyday thing up until this point. Um, yeah, man. Just, just, I'm just. I'm just well, I'll be linking your site, your your socials, so people can follow you and learn more about Be Free Blade Academy. Thanks. Um, thanks for everybody watching this this episode. Yeah, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button below. Make yeah. sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, over here, that, yeah, subscribe. Yeah. Leave some comments, questions. You know, have a question for Be Free. Leave Post below. Comment. He might he might respond. If yep. not, I, I might respond. Yep. You never but, know who. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, hey, it was great talking to you and catching up. Hopefully, we can have some in person yeah. sessions sometime, you know. Soon for sure. Be, uh, once once uh, this Delta thing winds down a little bit, I'll probably be traveling a little bit more. Yeah, man. You I know, feel but it. right now, I'm just like safe, my safe bubble. Well, you fam, anytime, any, anywhere, man, let me know. All yeah. Right? Well, thank you. Peace out, my friend. All right, man. Take care. <laughs> thank you for watching this episode of the Then and Now Blading interview series with Brian Freeman. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure and hit that like button below. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. All your subscriptions and likes really helps this channel grow and allows me to make more content in the future. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, you can leave those in the comments area. Visit thenandnowblading.com for more information on everything I'm doing. And I have links to all my social media below, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I also have links to my Patreon page and a donation page if you want to support this channel. Patreon supporters will receive exclusive content and perks. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jan Welch. Until next time, goodbye.